Now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world, Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. J. Carroll Nash as star of Commuter's Ticket, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness in entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now, a glass full would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you J. Carol Nash in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! Ever ride a commuting train? If you have, you probably don't think anything of it. Not if you're one of the regulars. Commuters are just people coming from one place and on their way to going someplace else. What happens in between doesn't mean a thing. They don't remember it afterwards. They don't see the scenery. They look right at faces beside them and don't see them. I know. I used to ride the 815 into the city to work every morning and the 545 home in the evenings. Yeah, I used to ride the train. Oh, uh, could I bother you for a match? What? Oh, man. Yeah, I left mine at the office. <clears throat> hmm? Uh, where I work, Consolidated Press. The wire service, you know. Don't say. Oh, I'm not one of the reporters. Uh, here's a book of matches, Keaton. Thanks. Now, I repair teletype machines. You know, the machines that print the news when it comes in and relay it out to the newspapers all over the country. Don't say. <laughs> Funny trades people get in it. Now, me, I was a speed typist. The fellow on my ship was a telephone man. Both wind up in the same place, repairing teletype printers. It's a whole profession, you know. Most people don't know it exists. But there you are. They break down just like any other machine. Oh, uh, what's your line? Look, I'm sorry. These rides are the only time I have to go over my report. Oh, sure, sure. I didn't mean to put in. I just thought maybe I'd seen you in the Laurel Creek station. No, not my station. I see a lot of people waiting for the train there, but, but I never get to know them. Oh, uh, my name's Bert Gavin. It's all right. Keep the matches. I got another book. You ride right along beside the same people, or the same kind of people anyway, for weeks, months, years. Nobody knows you're there. The same conductors see you every day, and still they ask you what's your station. I got so I took it for granted like any other commuter. Then I got to thinking about it again, especially on the down peninsula runs, going home to that house, that house that didn't have any love in it anymore. I said I lived in Laurel Creek. Well, that was my station. Only where I lived was on the wrong side of the tracks. The house was so close to the tracks, we couldn't have a backyard for the rails. Every time a train would go by, it'd shake the whole house. The walls would shake, the windows would rattle, the ground would shake under the foundations. It was like living on the edge of a volcano. As I walked into the house that night, the Bayside Limited was just coming through. Alva! Hey, Alva! Who is it? That you, Bert? What are you doing home? Did you lose your job? Well, it gets past. I can't hear you. What? What's that you say? Oh, I said shut up. Like this. Why'd you let me know? I finished early. We're going to get overtime. You're losing overtime. Well, maybe I want to have dinner with my loving wife for a change. Well, you won't. There's nothing in the house. Well, couldn't we rustle up some scrambled eggs or something? I told you there's nothing in the house. Well, what were you going to eat? I was going out, if you want to know. Who with? Well, it's none of your business. It's Al Gorman, isn't it? You've been seeing him again, haven't you? Well, what if I have? I don't want you to see him. You're my wife. Pity you didn't think of that when you moved me out here to the sticks. Well, your boyfriends don't seem to have any trouble locating you. You rented a house on the railroad tracks deliberately just to punish me. Well, you don't have to stay in it. No, I don't, but you do. And every time that train goes by in the night, I like it. You don't sleep so good, do you, Bert? The trains get on your nerves, too, don't they? I guess that's something you didn't figure on. Uh, hey, maybe I figured on more than you think. Well, what do you say that for? And what are you simpering about? What's the matter, Alva? You sound like you're scared of me. Of you? Oh, don't make me laugh. And don't make a scene when Alf comes by to pick me up. You know what happened the last time. But it won't happen again. Laugh's on me, isn't it? 
I moved you to the country to keep you away from the juke joint so he drives out here to see you. The country. You call this the country. A shack on the railroad tracks. You bring me here. <laughs> you must be crazy to think anybody could turn over a new leaf in a place yeah. like this. Maybe I am crazy, but not the way you think. Well, there you go again, getting that silly look on your face. What time did you say Alf was coming to pick you up? Seven o'clock. That's fine. That's perfect. I just have time to catch the 7.15 back in the town and earn that overtime. Well, what are you waiting for? It's about time for the 6.45 to pass by, isn't it? Yeah. Do stay and enjoy it, Bert, dear. Honey, you don't know how much I'm going to enjoy this. Ah, there it is. Here it comes. Well, it's a minute early this evening. Bert, what's the matter with you? What do you want with that poker? What do you think I came home early tonight for? Give you three guesses. Bert... Nobody saw me leave the office. The watchman was asleep. He'll still be asleep when I get back. As far as the police will know, I never left there. I was there all night fixing the printers. Earning my overtime. Bert, don't do it. You'll never get away with it. Everybody saw you coming out in the train. It'll be the same going back. You can't help being seen. So many people on those trains. What you don't know, honey. What you don't know. I'll scream. I'll scream so loud the neighbors will hear. Nobody's going to hear anything except this train. Yeah, there's a the big baby now. A nice long train. Long and loud. Go ahead, scream your head off. Bert, put that down. You don't know what you're doing, Bert. Get away from me. Oh, Bert, please, please listen. Go, Bert. Go, Bert. Go, Bert. Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you J. Carol Nash in Commuter's Ticket, a radio play by Roy Grandy and Robert Tallman. Roma Wines presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Ken Niles with a friendly suggestion. If the heat has you worn to a frazzle, soothe that ruffled disposition and those hot weather nerves. Take it easy. Cool off with the refreshing Roma Wine and Soda Ice. Yes, Roma Wine and Soda, America's smartest, coolest summer refresher. For there's nothing so cool to come home to as the thirst-quenching refreshment of Roma Wine and Soda. Long a summer favorite here in Hollywood... Roma Wine and Soda is now enjoyed by millions everywhere for cooling comfort and taste-tempting luxury. To prepare, just half-fill tall glasses with Roma California Sauterne or Burgundy or any other Roma wine type you prefer. Then simply add ice and sparkling water. That's all there is to it. Your Roma Wine and Soda is ready to enjoy. So good and cool. And remember, Roma Wine is selected for you from the world's greatest wine reserves. That's why a refresher made with Roma is better tasting every time. So for luxurious, low-cost refreshment, insist on Roma. R-O-M-A. Roma wine. Enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. And now, Roma wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage J. Carol Nash as Bert Gavin in Commuter's Ticket, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. The train was gone, and so was that awful feeling inside. I just stood there looking down where I'd knocked her. In the quiet, there wasn't any reason for what I'd done. I was sorry, kind of. I didn't want her dead now. But I had to follow it through. I had to work fast. Alf was coming for it at seven. He'd find her body. Maybe they'd try to hang it on him. <laughs> that was a laugh. It was just a small noise when I picked up the poker, but even that scared me. I had to wipe it off, though. Those small sounds a man makes when he's alone around a house... I heard every step I took. I'd have given anything for another train to break up the silence. But there wouldn't be another train till the one I had to get on. I had to work fast if I was going to catch it. I opened a broom closet and got out a stepladder. I set the ladder up and climbed to the top of it, feeling dizzy. What I wanted was in a pewter mug on top of the sideboard. I got it in a hurry and climbed down. It was over 2,000 bucks in cash. I'd been saving it for a long time. I needed it now. I might not be coming back to this house. I meant to put a ladder away. 
and straight out of there before Alf put in his appearance. The buzzer stopped me cold. It was him, all right. I could see a shadow on the frosted glass of the front door. In a minute, he tried the door. I didn't know whether it was locked or not. I didn't wait to see. I hit out the back way. The door that opened only a couple of feet from the railroad tracks. The three seconds spot, I was scrambling up over that great stake fence, out onto the tracks, lurching over the railroad ties. Where was the plan, that neat plan, so nobody would see me? I had a way mapped out, but, but that way was out the front door. Now, everybody in all the houses along the tracks could see me. Maybe not, though. People there don't look out through those dirty windows any oftener than they have to. At the station, I huddled back on a bench in the darkest corner and waited. I got on with the others, lost in the crowd. I walked through just like all the commuters. Took the first good empty seat I found. A whole seat to myself. Uh, mind if I sit here? What? Oh, no, no. I just thought maybe your wife... Wife? Well, that may be that you were holding this seat for somebody. Oh, no, no. No, it's okay. Oh, thanks. Well, say, this suits me. You know, I don't like it when there isn't somebody to talk to. <laughs> yes, sir, my name's Elmer Russell. Uh, what's yours? Uh, you must not ride on the trains very much. You guessed it. From what I hear, people don't meet up with each other very much, not on these commuting trains. I only use them since I'm working nights. I used to drive in. Uh, what was your name now? Hey, hey, what'd you do to your hand? My, my, my hand what? Well, you must have cut yourself. Look, it's all covered. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, excuse me. Just saw a friend of mine going to the car ahead. I wanted to see him on a matter of... I rushed on out of the car, my heart pounding. I went in and washed my hands. Out of all the passions on that train, I had to get beside somebody who didn't have the commuter's habit. And blood on my hands. Well, what was the difference? Nobody ever questioned him about me. The train lurched as I started down the aisle of the next smoker. Hey, hey, watch it. What's the big idea? I'm sorry. <laughs> train give a lurch. Sorry. Well, you don't have to cry about it. Just watch it. Yeah. Uh, hey, wait. What? Uh, help me pick up these dominoes. Oh, go on. Chase yourself. Hey, come back here. What's the big idea? Gee, I should have helped him pick him up. He'd remember. He'd remember that my being rude. Maybe not, though. Commuters, commuters are used to rudeness. I hurry down to the next car. Shut the door behind me and leaned back against it, feeling weak and dizzy. People near me looked up and stared at me. I must have looked pretty sick, judging from the way I felt. I grabbed the first vacant seat and fell into it. Well, look what just dropped down from the sky. Hey, can't keep us from having that port, can they? Well, what's your limit, friend? Ten percent a point? Now, don't tell us you don't play bridge. <laughs> You'd be the first commuter I ever met on this run that didn't play bridge, huh? <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. I play a little. I, I'm not very good, though. Uh, but I'll be glad to play. Good, good. You keep score, Jack. Sure. Uh, draw for the deal. Well, ace of spades. Looks like you're a lucky night, fella. Yeah. Uh, what's your name, by the way? A uh, name? Yeah, for the score pad. Oh, yeah, 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 for the score pad. Don't hold up the game, Jack. Just write down Mr. X. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Easy to remember. I was... Uh, uh, my, my name's Sam. Sam Cartwright. Oh, okay, Sam. All right, let's see. Now, who dealt? I played cards. What I picked up and laid down then, I can't remember. I could hardly see the spots on them. I was thinking of Alva's face, lying there in that miserable house by the tracks where I'd left her. Then it happened. The one they called Jack had just said, Your play, Sam. Then it happened. It was only the train going through the tunnel, but it brought it all back. A scream and the train roaring by, the whole house shaking. When I heard that squeal, my arms jerked up. What all I did, I don't know. Well, what's the matter, Sam? Oh, nothing. I well, play. We won't finish your rubber at this rate. Play, play. Yeah, yeah. I. Oh, I'm sorry, Donna. I thought there was another trump out. Sorry, your race takes it, chum. Yeah, I thought you said you didn't play much, Sam. Never seen such luck. Huh. Your deal, Whitney. Excuse me, Jeff. Got all your tickets? Oh. Yeah. Guess my coat was over the seat check. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, hey wait, wait, conductor. Yeah? You didn't get Sam's ticket. Yeah, Sam's too lucky. Can't let him get away with a free ride. I, uh, <laughs> well, I was back in the other car. Where was that? Just, well, to tell the truth, I, I forget whether I paid or not. I'll buy a ticket, though, just to be sure. Sorry to bother you. Here, I'll just take some change out of my wallet. Hey, and... there's your regular monthly commuter's ticket, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> yes, so it is. <laughs> I thought I left it home. <laughs> That's all right, Mr. Gavin. Gavin? I thought you said your name was Cartwright. I, uh... Oh, oh this is my brother-in-law's ticket. 
Oh, I see. Come on, come on, you guys. Pick up your gun. Yeah. I pass. No bid. Let's see. Buy me. Never seen a rotten hand. No, uh, me either. But Sam's going to bid, though. Sam doesn't get rotten hands. Sam, how about it? Oh, oh, no. No. Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? You look sick. What's the matter with you? Oh, I'm all right. Leave me alone, will you? Well, if you're going to bed, go on and bed. All right, all right. Just, just wait till the train gets by. The, the, the noise, I can't concentrate. It wasn't a passing train, not this time. It was the cards in my hand. I saw them all at once. It was a hand Culbertson might have written a book about. It was more than just a grand slam. I had every face card in the deck. But I wasn't going to be noticed on that train. I didn't even want to be remembered, no. And here I had a seven-note trump hand. Well, come on. Bid, man. Bid. I, yeah, all right. Sure. Uh, say, say I, I guess we better have a read deal. Where are the good cards? Somebody's got to have them. Say, the, the train's getting crowded. Sure is, mister. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. Here, here take, take my seat. Well, thank you, dearie. Hey, what's the oh, idea? The cards all over the hey, place. Hey, hey, where are you going? Sorry, next hey. is my station. So long. Well, I got out of show on that hand. But there was that abrupt departure to remember, and I'd given my seat to a woman. You don't see people giving seats to ladies very often these days. And the next car I stopped in the aisle and stood wedged in tight by the crowd... I was shaking, so it must have attracted attention. Then a conductor came through. Ticket! Ticket! Didn't get your ticket. Well, you, you punched my ticket. It was in the other car. I was playing cards, remember? Remember? Let me think now. I... No, no, it's all right. Here, here. I, I have my commuter's ticket. You can punch it again. Oh, here, it must be in my, it must be in my other pocket. Gee, where'd I put it? I, well, I couldn't have lost it. Well, never mind this time. But after this, take your seat check along when you move from car to car. Makes a lot of trouble for us when you don't. Then... Then you do remember? Well, never mind about that. Tell me, do you remember punching my ticket? Do you remember me? Uh, can't say as I do. One face gets to be just like another when you work the train so long. I'll just take your word for it. I breathed easier from then on. If that conductor didn't take any notice of me, then nobody would. Once I stopped jittering, people stopped staring at me. Or, or maybe I just imagined they were staring at me. Nobody watching for me at the station at San Francisco. I lost myself in the crowd and was back at the building where I worked before 8 o'clock. The watchman was asleep the way I figured he'd be, the way I'd planned it. I'd gone into the locker room before I left there and put a slug of sleeping medicine into his coffee thermos that it would put a horse to sleep. Now, there was no danger of his waking up, but I tiptoed past him just to make sure. I went into the big room where the printers were. They were running just like I left them. No paper snag, no carriages stuck. None of the operators had called in. They had, I could just say I'd gone out for a sandwich. <laughs> I guess I knew how to fix teletypes, all right. To keep them running or to stop them running. I fixed a couple of those so nobody could say they hadn't broken down. Of course, the papers had kicked plenty about losing all that news. My office had kicked plenty, yeah. Kicked me right into the proof of where I'd been all night. It was daylight before I left. On the way out, I tripped over the night watchman. I wanted him to see me leave, but he didn't stir. I shook him a couple of times, but, but he didn't wake up. So I stamped my card myself and went on my way. He'd give the right testimony in any case. He wouldn't dare admit he'd been asleep on the job. Well, I bought a newspaper and started for the depot, feeling pretty good. There wasn't anything in the paper about what I'd done to Alva. I was sure there wouldn't be. I had one eye on the city news ticker all night. Maybe Alf didn't go in. Maybe they hadn't found a body yet. That's what I kept telling myself, yeah... Yeah, that's what I kept telling myself. Uh, Mr. Gavin? Uh, yeah, I I'm Bert Gavin. My name's Daniels. Detective Inspector Daniels. I'd uh, like to ask you a few questions. Oh, well, certainly, Inspector. What is it? Well, first, I think you'd better give an account of your movements last evening and last night. Oh, well, that's easy enough. I, I spent the whole night at Consolidated News where I work. A couple of machines broke down, and I had to stay there and repair them. Fixing the teletype printers, that's my job. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. You're uh, under arrest, Mr. Gavin, huh? on suspicion of murder. Oh, now, 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 wait a minute. You're making a big mistake, Mr. Inspector. I, I don't know what happened here, but I've been there the whole night, and I can prove it. 
I've got my time card and the night watchman as a witness. Well, you picked a mighty poor witness, Mr. Gavin. Oh, well, what do you mean? That night watchman's dead, and you know it because you killed him, didn't you, Gavin? Oh, now, listen. I, I don't get it. I, I told you the truth. He was alive at 6 o'clock this morning, and he stamped my time card. I think we'd better go somewhere private where we can take down your statement. Well, okay, okay, but... Listen, Inspector, you're on the wrong track. Honestly, uh, why did I take such pains to prove I was there last night if I was a guilty party? Well, I suppose you figured there's no use lying about what we can prove. Your story had to check with your wives. My, my, my wife's? Yeah. Oh, we had a little trouble locating her, but she gave us a statement. What, what, where'd you locate her? In the hospital. She had a bad accident, fell off a stepladder and cracked her head on an ant iron. Oh, is, is she all right? Oh, sure, sure. Luckily, a friend dropped in just after it happened, and they got her to the hospital in time. Well, listen, listen, you've got to take me there. I've got to see her right away. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. After we get your statement and the money. What money? Why, the money you killed the watchman for, a little over 2,000 bucks, wasn't it? See, the way we got it figured, you put sleeping stuff in his coffee and then went after the safe. He came to and surprised you, so you let him have it with a wrench. Being dopey and an old guy, it was just too much for his heart. Uh-huh. <laughs> We got you cold, Gavin. Your prints are all over that wrench. Nice, fresh prints. Oh, listen, you got me all wrong. I... What time did it happen? Oh, around 7.30, the doctor figures. Then I can prove I didn't do it. I was home at a quarter of seven, and I took the 7.15 back to town. My wife will tell you that. Will she? The way she told it to us, you weren't home at any time. And if I'm any judge of people, she'll stick to that story. But I can prove I was on that train. I talked to people. I lost my commuter's ticket. The conductor will remember me. Yeah. Most of those people will be on the train again tonight. They'll remember. I had a 7 0 Trump hand at bridge. Oh, they'll remember. There must be somebody who'll remember me. Oh, that's all right. We'll take enough trips to strike an average. Oh, here. Here, this woman. <laughs> Hello, do you, do you remember me? I beg your pardon? Two nights ago on this car. Remember, I gave you a seat. Oh, how considerate. Do you remember me? Uh, let me think, dearie. Try to place this face, lady. Mm, no, I really couldn't, dearie. But I just wish somebody'd give me a seat now. <laughs> and I'd been afraid she'd remember me. While we walked through all the cars, I couldn't find any of the other witnesses, not even the conductor. But Daniels was understanding. He let me try the 715 with him the next night. I played bridge with you. I gave you my name as, as Sam, Sam Cartwright. No, I'm afraid I don't place you. But, but I was winning all the time. I even had a 7-0 Trump hand. Oh, I haven't seen any hands like that in years. You must have mistaken us for somebody else. Oh, here, here. At last. Uh, you remember me. Well, if you don't mind, I have this reading that I... Uh... But we, we met the other night, five nights ago it was. Is that so? Yeah, I remember. You said you weren't a regular commuter, so I knew you are the one person who wouldn't forget me. R remember I cut my hand. Five nights ago. Well, I've been riding the trains all the time since then. I, I'm afraid one face is getting to be much like another. <laughs> Well, that does it, Gavin. Come clean now. But I did take the 715 that night. I'm telling the truth. There. There, that's the conductor. Huh? Out, out on the platform. Look. I found the conductor. Why bother, Gavin? Conductor. Hmm? Do you remember seeing me on this one a week ago? Well, I'm afraid one face is pretty much oh, like... Oh, I know, a... I know. But, but I lost my commuter ticket. We talked about it. Lost the commuter ticket? Uh, what's the name? Wait, Gavin. Can't you remember me? No, but I might have some tickets here. I find a few strays once in a while. Oh, that's it. That's my ticket. Let me see that. My ticket. says my name on it, see? You found this on the 715? Well, mister, couldn't say what run it was. They shuttle the cars around, you know. <laughs> that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? No, thanks, conductor. That's all I needed. They had me called a murder I didn't commit. That was a funny part of it. Daniels was the right guy, though. He, he gave me one last chance to establish my alibi. At the hospital, Alva refused to see me, but Daniels agreed to see her himself and question her about my story, that I was home at the time of the murder. I waited in the corridor outside Alva's room. He was in there almost an hour. Uh. 
Well, Gavin? Did you get anywhere? Did she tell you anything? Yeah. Yeah, she told me plenty. She told you I was home? I couldn't have murdered the watchman? She signed a detailed statement to that effect. Then my alibi's good. Oh, sure, I couldn't have killed the watchman. Oh, your alibi for the watchman will stick all right, Gavin. But uh, I'm afraid we'll still have to hold you for murder. But, you but... see, your wife just made a new statement telling us what actually happened when you came home. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. We had a quarrel. I'm sorry. Matter of fact, I, I should have told you. And uh, just after she signed the statement, she passed away. What? Dead? She's dead? Are you sure? Oh, there's no doubt about it, Gavin. Well, it's getting late. I gotta check in. You were ready to go? Yeah? Yeah. You think they'll they'll give me an inside cell? Mm, I can get you one if you want it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'd like that. Nice and quiet. Away from the train! Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Before we hear again from J. Carroll Nash, the star of Commuter's Ticket, tonight's suspense play, this is Ken Niles with a Hollywood party idea for the ladies. When it's your turn to entertain these hot, sultry afternoons, treat your guests to the thirst-quenching refreshment of Roma Wine Lemonade. So light, so ripe. So easy to serve. Roma Wine Lemonade, first acclaimed by smart Hollywood hostesses, is now popular with women everywhere. The thirst choice among cold, tall refreshers. And Roma Wine Lemonade is so simple to prepare. Just place ice and the juice of half a lemon in a tall glass, pour three quarters full with Roma California Burgundy or any other Roma wine type you prefer, add water and sweeten to taste. Quick as a wink, Roma Wine Lemonade is ready with cold, satisfying, low-cost refreshment for all. And because Roma Wine is selected for you from the world's greatest wine reserves, refreshers made with Roma are better tasting naturally. So insist on Roma, R-O-M-A, Roma Wine, largest selling wine in all history. Now, this is J. Carroll Nash. Uh, Mr. Spear has been telling me about next Thursday's suspense show, and uh, I must say he has whetted my appetite for it tremendously. It'll present an all-star cast of Hollywood's finest radio actors headed by Wally Mayer in a play which, according to Mr. Spear, contains some of the most powerful ingredients of distilled suspense that he has encountered since the now internationally famous Sorry, Wrong Number. It concerns the converging of death upon a helpless man and the unknowing conspiracy of people all over the city whom he has never even met to bury him alive. So let's all be sure and listen. Thank you. J. Carroll Nash appeared through courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Holiday in Mexico. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you Wally Mayer and an all star cast of Hollywood's finest radio actors in Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Produced by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. Suspense is broadcast from coast to coast and to our men and women overseas by shortwave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.